Coming up this week on the Digital Lifestyle Show 862, Gary's here and uh, we've got lots of Windows updates to talk about this week. 20H2, uh, 22H2, we've got Windows 10 22H2 as well, some information on that. Uh, we've got dev builds, beta, release previews, uh, talking about Sky Q, just got one of those and how it just reminds me of Windows Media Center and what we're missing uh, what and what to do with an old Skybox. Gary's got an EV update for us and lots more, so let's get straight to Gary. Gary, good evening. Good evening. And it's a pleasant evening. We've had a lot of rain here today, but it's really warm tonight, actually. Yeah, so it's just been picking up warm warmth again. It's uh, heading up there again. So, and we'll yeah, see. we need some more warmth to ripen my tomatoes. Um, <laughs> but they're so doing all right. How, how, how are all the sensors working in, out there to keep track of your tomatoes? Let me just open the window while I'm <laughs> weird. Reach, reach behind me and open this virtual window. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the um, yeah, all sensors are going okay. The, the I've got the temperature sensor on there, so I did see it was sort of getting to forty-five degrees when uh, I was away. But I was with the door and the window open. But yeah, it's uh, it's cooled down. What I've noticed actually, I didn't have switched on on the blink camera, as you can get temperature alerts on that when the camera gets too hot. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can set a threshold when it tell, sends you a warning. So actually, if you you can use that to monitor the the outside temperature of your garden for, through the blink camera. Um, when the direct sun's on it in the morning, because it is facing where the camera is, it does record higher temperature. But then once the sun's not direct on it, actually, it's pretty accurate uh, outside temperature. So between the hive, the hive's got the internal temperature. They've got the Switchbot got the greenhouse temperature and and the blink cameras got the outside garden temperature. So I actually got pretty much a lot of information on in terms of temperature. Yeah, so armed with plenty plenty of uh, temperature sensors. I haven't got a moisture sensor in there, but to be honest, you need to more or less go out every day anyway. So maybe that that's the the next thing I'll look at. Got a few projects. I've I've um I've completed one application. Which um, I don't know. I mentioned this. I've got this Uno drum, which I've been using quite yes, a bit recently. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah. It's a nice drum machine, and um, th- there's loads of different sounds you can sort of sound banks you can download for, for it. And the way that they they do them, it's effectively a firmware update that swaps the sounds out. So I think there's 12 different sound sets, and to actually apply them, you use the firmware like a, t- a firmware tool. It puts it into update mode. You do install. It puts it in, you reboot it, and and then it's got the new sounds on it. And the way that you get them through the IK multimedia download tool, you end up with a, a few folders, and you've got to unzip each folder. And then when you go into sort of three folders down, there's an executable which you run, um, and then that and that downloads the app, or that, that runs the app. So I thought, but then the, they're all called Sound Bank One to Ten. So you first of all, you've got to go down all these hierarchical folders and then you've got to remember well the Roland TR-808 is in Soundbank 5 so you browse to the all the way down find the double click the execution the, the, the installer puts them on whatever so because it's just command line stuff I've created a little UI so um using .NET so I've got a picture of the various drum machines so I've got 10 the sort of 10 pictures and you just click on the button and it does the folder navigation for you and it runs the executable puts the update on and then that's it so you don't have to remember where they're stored you only have to I, I managed to do a bit of reading of the subdirectories so all you have to do is tell the application the folder where you've unzipped everything and it doesn't care about the fact that you might be 10 layers down you know 10 folders further down it scans through the folders so you just say all the fo- all the stuff's over here in this folder it scans it through does everything for you and you've got the buttons then so um i don't know how many uno drum users are are out there but uh, I'm, i'll i'll release that because it's handy for me it just makes it you you don't have to first of all navigate to the folders is a pain and also you don't have to try and remember always uh, i want the you know the simmons drum kit that's in set bank seven so, so you just you just press the simmons button and it comes up install and then there you go so i mean that's that's i've i've, I've said this line, line before but software is a superpower i think that is definitely one of the first yeah. cases because <laughs> it's yeah, such a it thing is, yeah. it just makes life so much easier it, 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 yes yeah. yeah there may not be that many people out there using them but every single one of them is going to be really grateful for that <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um and it, it makes my life easier so I'm, I'm hoping it makes someone's life easier in fact um 
because it's it's nice and portable, I should be able to show you on this machine. Yes, I can share my screen. And I've, already, I've not gone to town on the UI. So here's the application. Uh, you just click whichever. So there's a you, you can browse for the folder. It calculates all the folders itself by navigating through the folders. And then, so if I want the 80s Roland, I just hit that button and that'll launch the installer. And of course, there's the installer, but it's not plugged into this machine, so it can't install it, but that's all you do. And you want the factory reset, you can go through and, and so on. So really simple. Um, yeah. And that's what you said, like you said, that's one thing I do, that's, that's the way it's nice and you've got the development tools. You can just, oh, I'll just knock that up myself. You don't have to you know, get someone else to do it. You, you can just do it. So yeah, that's that's why I like that. That's good. So that's one one of the things. And I'm still working on the other thing. I was my LED light, MIDI to LED light strip. I say it works. I can read the MIDI really fast and responsive. I just going through the interface to write back to the light strip is too slow. Because uh, there's so much MIDI information comes comes back, it doesn't catch up to to do the light strip and everything else. It's quite so. I'm I'm trying to make a micro Python program that just takes parameters, so you just fire numbers at it, and rather than it doing the, all the lights in different bits, I'm just going to make them either go red, green, or blue. So you can just fire like a one to make it red, two blue, and things, so that you just have to send single commands to it rather than sending a whole heap of program to it each time to you know change it. So that should make it faster on that. So the, the idea that I can put the light strip under the keyboard and as I'm playing, it, it could play. I mean, ideally, this is possible, um, but it's probably a bit complicated. Is that I would like the to read the MIDI clock data coming from the sequencer, so it pulses, so it gives you the a, a visual counter, you know, a metro, visual metronome. That would that would be good. It's possible to do. How accurate you can write the timings of it, I'm not quite sure, but it should be theoretically possible. So that um, even I suppose that you could even read a note, a metronome note. But whatever, I'd like to be able to get it to go one, two, three, four as you're recording. Uh, that would be quite cool. So. Still, still working on that. LED light strip is good fun though, but it's, it, the micro Python is. It'd be nice if I could interface it directly from the MIDI program. But I can't unless I could get a USB micro Python to USB MIDI controller. I'm not. I think I need to bridge that somewhere. So maybe a Pi would be better to to directly bridge it. But I don't know. I I, I, I stick in .dot net because that's what I know. That's what I know. <laughs> yeah, you can program it in .dot net. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's a good thing. And and I didn't have to write my own MIDI interface because on uh, GitHub there's you know hundreds of different ones, and I pull one down that looked easy to use and. Uh, I could use that. So yeah, it's good, good fun not doing that. But anyway, so uh, these things are the the music stuff is quite good because it's it's interactive with stuff you're doing. So uh, we've got lots of other things. We've got lots of Windows updates, Microsoft updates this week. They've been pressing on with that. Um, I've got some new stuff to try, but I've not actually tried these yet. So we talk, we talk this week some with smart plugs and with smart devices you've played with these before yeah i've used the ones. they're actually really good very easy to set up um yeah work quite well with, with the the lady lady a and um, yeah this yes that's that's my idea yeah, because i've got to replace my d-link smart plug that's in the that controls my lights at, um because that's been the pulled the plug on metaphorically uh, <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the year so i've got that and it they've even got a little portable light as well to try with it so that's things to things i need to get set up i'll tell you what i did get today though is um sky q now i know it's not exactly a new thing um in fact my skybox is like nearly i don't know 13 years old it's it's actually worked quite well but i thought maybe it's time i got one of the new the new boxes and and actually it, it it's really good for me as in we do watch netflix and uh the lads have got Sky uh, Disney subscriptions as well, so we tend to use the Xbox for that and the, um, the Skybox for TV. So now, of course, with Sky Q, it's all integrated. So um, you sign in your Amazon account, you can sign in with your Disney Plus account, Netflix, and all YouTube or whatever. So it's all on one device. And when and when I see the the blue interface that it has. And the curved edges, it looks very much like Windows Media Center. I, I, I don't know. I don't know whether there is any direct influence or whether you know the developers seen Media Center or even there's any extra Microsoft is 
at at Sky. I don't know, but it. it it certainly looks very similar. Some of the picture in picture, it, it takes you right back actually using it. So it, it it almost to me looks like how Media Center would have looked if they carried on developing it. Um, it's just a more modern version of that. But the concept of it is exactly the what what we were trying to do. And so if I can watch a movie on there, it doesn't actually matter what what subscription service it's from because it's pulling the content together so you can browse they, they, they can, you can you don't have to launch the app so it's not a case of watching sky and then loading the netflix app and browsing that the content is surfaced equally so uh if you if you watch stranger things you know you just search stranger things and you can watch it or if you if it's an amazon content you can search for amazon uh, content as well so yeah it, it is um it is pretty much that visit even even like spotify apps on there you can you can use you play it from your phone directly to there and, and so on but um, so yeah, it looks it looks good. Uh, just just got it set up, but uh, interestingly, I had to have a new dish fitted. Um, it didn't cost me anything, but they've actually fitted a new dish today in a different location on the side of the house because of trees from people's gardens that have grown over the twelve years since or whatever years I've had a sky dish. The guy said actually I didn't put the dish over there because the tree lines it's better to cl- clear line of sight. Um, so it, it's well, yeah, when you get because th- this house is what 20 years old, so when I put first dish in, you know, the, the houses were the, the, the trees were smaller and they've grown up and they're blocking the line of sight, so that's actually was affecting the signal quality. So, uh, yeah, I think I need to go around and see the neighbors and get them to cut some of their trees back because people plant these things and just leave them, don't they? Especially the sort of conifer type things, they, they, mm. they, um, yeah. So, yeah, so, so I'll, I'll be able to talk more about it next week we haven't used it but it's 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 not unfamiliar it's you know it's very similar to the other box the older box but i have got the older box here now and i'm wondering what can i do with the older box because it's um it runs linux isn't it the the old sky yeah, plus does, boxes yeah. yeah um it's got network interface on there it's got optical output um it's got um it's got a tuner in there. Yeah, I can't throw it away. I mean, I might as well throw it away. But it, but it seems wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I don't know what I could do with it. But I mean, it's an old hard drive in there. It's not. I can't. I, I I can't imagine there's much that I want from it. There's nothing on there that I want to keep. But it just feels wrong to be throwing away of effectively a computer, a Linux computer that with all these interfaces on it. Um, I, I must be able to use it for something else. I'm sure if I googled it, I'd be able to find some find some yeah, stuff on that. Some, somebody must have done a project on repurposing a Sky Plus box. <laughs> yeah, but, I it mean, just I feels that wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like this. Our, our, probably our, our hoarding mentality as as early adopters and gadget gadget free. Yeah, so we tend to hoard things yeah. and uh, never want to throw them away. But uh, yeah, I mean the the Sky do actually do a recycling scheme, don't they? If you really don't mm. know. Um, yeah. But, um, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I. I. I'll, I'll pull the hard disk out and mount the hard disk on a, on on the on the Raspberry Pi. See if I can read it and read onto it. But uh, yeah, I got it. I got to be able to use it for something. I don't. I don't know what. <laughs> um. But yeah. So I'll talk about. Anyway, I'll talk about it next week. But yeah, it's, it's not a new thing and. Uh, but it it does look good. I'm looking forward to watching the some of the like sort of live sports where you can do recaps and that kind of thing. And see see how well that works. Right, moving on to uh, builds. Well, we had a, a ton of stuff came out last week, and in fact, Microsoft carried on with it uh, this week. So we had um, a new dev build last week, and that was two five one six nine uh, for the dev channel. Now the uh, there wasn't a huge amount on this one, if I remember rightly. Um, oh, yeah, that was a kiosk mode. Actually, it's something that might be interesting for IT administrators or if you're doing maybe uh, doing event type things, you want to have kiosks. Yeah. I don't um, You can, there's, there's new kiosk mode for multi, multi applications as well. So you can lock down applications, improve applications, and you can lock down settings and you can. Do things like enable Wi-Fi, but lock all the other settings down. So it gives you that flexibility. So I guess I don't know. Do you see that something you do for the event type stuff? Do you kiosk oh, yeah, stuff, you, or is it all yeah. mobile now? 
Well, a lot of it's mobile, but Kiosk still stuff is still still around. I mean, sort of trying mm. to do big screen stuff and things off mobile. It's not difficult. It's not easy. So, sort of big touch screen Kiosk stuff. Yeah, the people do that all the time. And it's uh, and it's usually done with Linux boxes. So it makes sense that uh, Windows gets into the market. Um, might make life easier for some of the content people want to display. I mean, uh, often they're doing things like RDPing from uh, a remote desktop protocol from a Linux box to a Windows box to get the stuff up on the the Kiosk yeah. display. Um, this might make it easier. So yeah, um, definitely, yeah, because definitely interesting. Things like there's um, it it blocks some of the pop up the UI pop ups, which uh, definitely makes sense. Um, but as well as that, it also restricts um, you know enables the Wi Fi. I think that's quite a clever idea, so that you can um, you can at least the Wi Fi works. So you, know, you can give some you can give someone the thing. You can put their own Wi Fi key in rather than having to unlock the whole device, which I think uh, yeah it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Other than that, I don't think there was a huge amount in that uh, build. It, it was mainly that and uh, a few fixes. Um, so um, yeah, I did I did the hands-on video, but there's not a huge amount in that. But there was quite a, a bit of activity on the beta channel, um, and in fact, there has been again today. So last week we got two two six two one dot four four zero and two two six two two dot four four zero. Which, uh, for the listeners not keeping tabs on this, there's, that's where. So there's two different builds you can get if you're on the beta channel now. So we're all, we're not as bad as when we had skip ahead and everything else. But yeah, you've got two different builds. But if you're on the lower build, you don't get any features. But you can go into Windows Update and select the higher the higher build if you want that. So you're not totally restricted. But it's interesting that they brought down one of the I think one of the nicer features from the dev channel and that's the three dot um, overflow for the taskbar um, which I find that that's a really handy feature actually so uh, like I said last week I'm, I, I didn't realize it didn't do it so yeah I'll show I'll I can share my screen so yeah you can see so this is a feature actually was was came came down from the dev build a week before so you get the three dots when you fill the screen up so if I on my machine here on um, which on release preview if i load loads apps and fill up this taskbar they just fill and overflow and you you, you can't yeah. I, you don't see them yeah. whereas now you get the the three dots and that that was only in the dev channel for say about a week or so and then uh, they, they brought that one straight across so that's quite good so that's in 22622 if you're on 22621 you won't see that but you can switch across uh, which is which is quite good so and the other thing they've changed the open with as well, uh, the open with dialog box. So it took, it, the Windows 8 style one has been replaced with a, a Windows 11 style one, which again is from the dev channel uh, builds only a couple of weeks ago as well. So they're, they're moving these features quite rapidly through the, the channels at the moment. And I'm guessing then that this, say this overflow, which you would think is a feature for next year or because it was in dev, but no, it's going to go straight through. It's in beta now. So that that I, I presume that will go in 22H2 now uh, once that gets released. But the it, they've also today released um, another set of builds, and that is 22621450 and 22622450. Um, so that, again, they're just... Um, the, the incrementing those builds across. Um, funny they're the same build number though, aren't they? As I'm, as I'm talking, I realise that they're, they're, they're calling them the 2262.440. Oh, it's 450 now, isn't it? Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> a subtle change there. 450 instead of 440. So that that's that was released uh, today as well. So there was no new features in that. There was just some bug fixes. Um, some minor changes in that so i i was speculating but i'm guessing that this is getting close to the edge of end of development now for um for 22 h2 we already know that 22621 is the build it's just these last bits that they're, they're working on so uh, there's just a few fixes in those um and um there still is a known issue if, if you're um, struggling to get the build you might this may be a known issue as well so 22H2, I think he's pretty much done. 
and uh, we're just getting these minor fixes now. Uh, we also did get a, a release preview update as well last week. So if you're on the release preview channel, there was um, two two six two one dot three one seven, which again just had some uh, bug fixes in there. Um, so it's twenty two H two. They're shipping the, these uh, builds out quite quickly now. So yeah, I, I my guess that um, they'll ship all these features like the task overflow and tab browser and everything else uh, pretty soon now. So maybe in the next few weeks, and then that'll be twenty two H two done until it ships end of September, October. I think you said end of September as well. I think that that seems most likely. I think I said 1st of October, didn't I? Uh, yeah, yeah, end of September, 1st of October. Yeah, I guess it, it's yeah. around that time. Um, Richard did mention that um, maybe there was the, uh, an event that they could show this off, but uh, there is, they've actually announced the first in-person event for some time. I think it's Ignite, isn't it? Yeah, they have, yeah. I was, I was surprised to see that, but uh, good news. Yeah, so that's. I think it's a hybrid one, isn't it, again? It is a hybrid one, um, but this is partly in yeah. person, so, yeah. Yeah. Interesting to see how whether they go completely back and do things like MVP summit and build and all all these events as back as full as full uh, events or they stick with the sort of the hybrid approach. I I quite like the hybrid because it it gives you access to the sessions without having to the expense of getting um, to the locations, but you can if you if you want to. Uh, but anyway, it's funny that Mitch, Richard mentioned that ignite. So uh, all the set. Uh, an event was coming. When is when is that? Is the end of September, October, something like that? I forgot when it was now. Thank you. Think. Okay, we'll have to uh, ignite twenty twenty two. We'll have to look it up. Yeah, fourteenth of October, twelfth to fourteenth October. That does seem like a good time to uh, yeah, to release does. twenty. Yeah, so Richard might be uh, might be close to it there because uh, that that would be I think. I think it, uh, 22H2 will be done then. So that would be a good place to release it and announce it. Mm. Um, there was some other build stuff as well, actually. The um, Windows 10 22H2 has been so, so much confirmed. But in fact, Microsoft have actually have said that they, they are releasing 22H2 H2 for Windows 10. Uh, in fact, they've pushed it to release preview. But what they haven't done, they said, what well, what's in in the update yeah. so they were a bit vague on on details um and they, they they made it available via the seeker experience in windows update and uh if you're on windows update uh windows insider for business you could get it there i'm guessing this is for, for business isn't it to uh to have the the fixes in because they'll need to support that one because they, they're supporting windows 10 till 2025 they need to to lead a supported build going forward, won't they? So 22H2 will be the, the supported build and probably 23H2 next year and so on. So, But uh, what they haven't said is what's in the update. Um, so uh, I don't know whether there's going to be any features included or whether they're just bug fixes. I mean, I can't imagine them re releasing any new Windows 10 features, but I, they could backport some stuff from Windows 11, I suppose. But um, I'm not sure that they, they, there's any inclination to that. This is, to me, seems more like for enterprises just to make sure they've got a supported version to to have as a as sort of a minimum version uh, on the system, so they they know where they're up to. Yeah, so that's uh, Windows 10 22 H2 kind of Windows 10. Windows 10 is old news now. <laughs> we're, we're Windows 11 now. And the other thing they've released today as well is an update to the uh, subsystem for Linux, uh, for Android, sorry, uh, with an August update as well, which includes some nice fixes for gamepad and game controllers and that kind of thing. So um, if you're uh, if you're using that subsystem and you want to play some Android games, then this, there's there's some nice little fixes for that as well. Um, so you can uh, you can check that out as well. Still no news on when that will. Be available to any other um, regions in US English and the Amazon App Store. Um, it's a strange one, though, isn't it? You think for, for the power of the 
subsystem, it doesn't get much use really because you're just side loading or you're just loading apps from the Amazon App Store. But uh, yeah. we've mentioned in the past, it is quite handy, I suppose, if you're setting up a Wiz smart plug and you you know use one of their apps, you can do it through Android. Or you can do it through on your laptop. Otherwise, you'd have to do it through through the browser because there's no there's no Windows app for it. So um, that kind of thing, I suppose, is where it becomes useful. I use it for for the uh, some of the smart home stuff. That's probably the only time I really use the, the subsystem. It's, it's quite handy for the Hue lights and that kind of thing. So those were all the updates for from Microsoft. So they were quite busy last week with uh, with updates. Uh, but yeah, I think they're getting close to finishing 22H2. Yeah, you can sort of see the end, end is nigh, can't you? And they're, they're just getting yeah. You also start, start to get updated out quicker around this time, I think, because they, they're just churning out fixes and trying yeah. to get things out there. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are. They're trying to get the uh, the fixes the fixes done. Um, now, what else did we have for this week? Oh, um, I have got much of the music earlier, and I've um, I've been ending the show with a few music tracks. So check out those. I'll, I'll probably have another one this week. And um, I actually did some video. I got one. I've actually probably be able to include it this week. I, I went down to the beach when I was on holiday with my phone to record some audio. I wanted to grab some audio. So I actually found the best way to record audio is to record video uh, because the sound recorder was doing it in mono. Whereas if you, uh, I was using the note, um, if you record video, it gets it in nice stereo. So you get the nice, the sea crashing sort of on the beach. Uh, so I used the video. So, so I've done a track with that audio. Um, but I thought I, I could use the video as well. So I actually put together a, a bit of a video of the beach sand. So I didn't have a huge amount of footage. I probably had about you know a minute or so footage for a three or four minute track. So I had to repeat things back and you know change the speed and stuff. And uh, video edit, I find video editing of these big files is actually a bit sluggish, um, even on the surface a laptop studio so i much prefer edited audio and very precise with audio video video syncing the video is not not quite the same but anyway i have done it so i'll in, probably include it on this week's show or i'll include a link to it once i've uploaded it as well so i've now got a video to go with the the music that i've done which was which is quite good so i also grabbed a load of footage from mount etna as well so that's my next project oh, is to uh, uh when i was up there so there's no lava spilling over anything like that. you weren't allowed that close but there's lots of smoke rising up and and uh yeah volcanic landscapes so i include that with uh with uh, some of my my tracks as well um yeah what else did we have for this week have you been playing anything new this week uh, i thought i did one bring up one story um you remember we had kate from charge safe on a couple couple of yeah one months back making that um they've just announced that uh, they've just signed up um the wonderful people at osprey as one their as their first corporate um client which means osprey are committing to this charge space space charge safe charter um and, and to be fair osprey have been one of the better ones at providing um space found charges and, and disability access and accessibility think, from yeah. day one and and certainly the recent their recent installs have been really really good, so um, yeah I, I'm good glad to see that happening and, and, and we do need to have that because some of the charges are still really inaccessible. Um, I'd say particularly the ones at McDonald's they seem to be the, a lot of the landlords seem to put a lot of premium on um, uh, on parking spaces and and don't give m yeah. much space for these charges to put them in. Um, I think that actually does need to be some. Uh, uh, this is one area where I would be pro government regulation to actually make it compulsory to actually allow a bit more space around a charger and that. Because I mean, I, I've I've been in situations where I've parked my car, not been able to get out of the door with the girls. Uh, you just can't mm. get physically, can't get out of the back door. So um, yeah, it's 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 a problem. Um, I mean, I understand charge manufacturers want to protect their, their charges, but sometimes the bollards they put to protect them from being ram ram to stop you opening your doors, or you, you're only really mm. available only really the driver can get in and out not a very good design in lots of ways i mean you often you're yeah. grateful for the charge but uh, but having said that i mean a lot of the these out of the way single or dual charges are, are now in areas where there's there's charge banks charges going up there seems to be more and more hubs opening everywhere and, and one of the biggest movers and shakers on this is is the motor fuel, motor fuel group 
who've got loads of garages around. They they seem to whenever they they convert a garage over, they don't just put one charger in; they put eight sort of mm-hmm. kind of as, a, as a minimum, and they're all good chargers as well. And they work well. And as I've said before in the show, they actually listen. They listen to me on Twitter, Twitter when I complained about the cable length on one on charge on set chargers, and a few weeks later they were all changed and made longer. So. Um, yeah, I think that it's, it's it's really good to see them doing this, and and they've got a lot of properties around them to come to a country on very useful parts of the road system. Um, so yeah, I mm. think that it's good to see that happening. It's definitely making life easier. Um, yeah, about so and uh, yeah, and I've certainly since I've had the the EV6, I'm I'm, I'm really stopping at, <laughs> at charges because it's just very frugal and juice. And I, yeah, I had two nine five on the on the the, the real world mileage the other day, um, available range. That, so I mean that's not for so. I mean that is you know many vehicles that is a tank of fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. So yeah, it's a, so it's a range you would have got anyway in your car in a petrol car. Yeah, I, and I've said this before. It, it, even 120 miles would be far more range than I used to have. I had on my first ever petrol car. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, before we started getting into economic cars, a lot of cars were real gas cars, and, and mm. even a full tank wouldn't get you more than a couple, a couple hundred miles. So yeah, I mean, it's it's and this will improve all the time. And we're getting better batteries. We're getting smaller batteries. Um, lighter batteries. And we we shall see some very very long range vehicles over over time. Uh, but three four hundred miles, absolutely fine. I think that, that covers most most of the UK and we, with a mi- maximum of one stop. Um, mm-hmm. And as I said the other day, if you if you've got des- destination charging, then you, you're covered anyway. And there's more and more people starting to yeah. look at destination charging. So I'm a sort of I can't actually remember what it was, but I saw a car park the other day which had, uh, had decided to actually put a charger on every every space. So sort of low mm-hmm. power, but mm-hmm. that's all you need when you arrive on the park. Oh, car park, plug it in. Yeah. Go shopping, come back, and you've gained back the, the the juice you've used to get there. Yeah, yeah, but, and, and, and that then relieves that and that any anxiety and makes it as you, it makes it a place where you would think, oh, we'll go there because you know we know yeah. we can get charged and everything else. So it does make sense for them to to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, the only thing I still complain about is the reliability charges, and I think again we need some action taken on that. We kind of need an off-gem charges with a bit of, with some teeth to actually to actually yeah. clamp down on some of these issues. Because um, I think the, one of the biggest problems is there's capital there's been capital grants available to install charges, but there haven't been grants available to keep to keep them maintained and keep them sustained. So a lot of councils went ahead and got their grants because why not um but now these charges are creaking at the seams and not being maintained so yeah i think yeah. that's that's one of the issues but i said these modern hubs are coming in they work um, and there's usually a spare one you can go to although i did notice this week at last weekend it, um from all accounts people were finding they were quite busy um i mean that that school get school holidays getaway weekend so, yeah 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 yeah. So, yeah interesting to see that though um so, yeah, yeah. Some, some, some interesting stuff coming around. And and uh, I've seen, you know, while there's fuel companies like, I think it was BP, record profits has now been some pressure on the government, isn't it, to, to make them invest in renewing up renewables and electric charging and all of that. There's, you know, there's a lot of people want that profit to be spent that way. Yeah, that's one option. Yeah. Because it, it's a, yeah, if they, if they improving the infrastructure and everything just makes it you know just a much easier decision when you get to that you know when you're choosing a, a, a vehicle uh, if, if you can see the plug points and everything else you know the charging points and uh, it gives you that confidence then hmm. it's interesting even my mum, mum now recognizes where there's ev charging points she says but there's one down the road now for you dad gary you can come visit me again <laughs> 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 well i wouldn't do anyway but <laughs> Yeah, and I have actually started to see as well. It's getting more common now. You, I've seen extension leads sort of out of people's houses and going into into the vehicles. Now you, you see that, you know, as you're walking around now. Yeah, and and, and that that could cause issues. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you shouldn't be blocking pavements and the like. And there are there's are some moves afoot to actually make it easier to get councils to put sort of under um, pavement channels in to get your cables in and out. To your house, um, if you offer, I mean, I do feel so for people who don't have off, off road parking because it is a way more of a challenge to use an EV in that situation. I mean, 
someone said said to me, what, 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 I'd hate losing all that time charging to me the other day. And and someone else on Twitter actually pointed this out. When you've got an electric car, you don't lose charge time charging, you actually gain time because 99% of my charging is done at home. I just plug in, I get home at night, I plug it in, forget about it, it's charged the next day. And I only probably do that once a week anyway, because I don't need that much charge. Um, which means I'm not driving out to go and find a petrol station and stop, which you do regularly with a petrol car. Um, and that's and, and that was taking a way ch- a, a, a reasonable chunk out of my time. Now, maybe I go on a long journey two or three times a year, and maybe I stop two or three times during those long journeys. Um, but I would stop anyway, and, he, and I probably only ever stop more than no more than ten minutes extra on each of those. So, so let's, let's say let's say that's a five times a year, an extra thirty minutes. That I I still reckon I I'm saving time over the time I used to go to go to the garage actually <laughs> every yeah. week. So it, it's includes, it's convenient to charge at home as well, isn't it? You just it I mean I. I I have to make an effort, like you know, to to go and fill up my car, the petrol car. Um, you know, I usually do it on my way home or whatever, and it adds ten minutes on my way home once a week or whenever I fill up. Um, it, yeah, it, it's ten minutes, and especially if the traffic's busy, and I think oh, I've still got to go because I need it for the morning and so on. So you know, you end up going away, whereas you know, you park at home and you charge up then. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably one of those people who'll be okay because I'm always very good with charging my devices. But some people are terrible at that. Uh, mm-hmm. My son Jack, yeah. he's terrible with like that, but I'm actually pretty good at that. So I think I'd be okay. Uh, okay well, I, well I, have a sort of, I have a rule of uh, basically a, a, a level which I won't go below, which is is enough. It's basically a, it's a round trip to round trip to all the parents. So if if you mm. uh, if there was an emergency occurred and I need to go off and go and get one of them or do do take to the hospital, yeah. Like that, I, if, if I never drop below enough mileage to do that plus a, a, a buffer, um, and 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 that's my rule of thumb. For, for, but when I get close to that, I start. I charge it overnight, and it, it usually charges on cheap rate because it, it's got enough time and cheap rate to do it, and it's it's really easy. But I mean, mm. you can just top them up every night, and they're quite happy to be topped up every night. Um, they, and then you then you're only ever going to be doing it on cheap rate. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably what I would do. I, I'd be one. I'd be a top up at night type person. I think yeah. that's because yeah. that's how I charge my phone and things like that. So yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's just, yeah, um, yeah. I've got to say, if you've got decent electric electrics, you don't even necessarily need a home charger. You could use a good one, what we was commonly known a ground, as a granny charger, a 13 pin plug charger. Hmm. Again, it, it'll charge slowly, but if you're trickle charging, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I know what you mean. It's um, it's just a, uh, just changing your mindset, how you think, isn't it? And just a different way. You, you you you're doing this, but you don't have to do this. And it's just a different way of thinking things. Uh, and as the as the infrastructure improves all the time, then it's just going to make it easier. I get. It. It's just uh, it's just. Um, I suppose the thing is now is that is the is the the charge that um, the cost vehicle cost price as they're coming down it just makes more more sense mm. it's just at some point yeah. it's good meet, meet your budget it is and, and and to be honest i think there's there's a lot of it's it's not as reasonable now that um the, 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 there's that big difference between a petrol car and a, a, a battery electric car because the battery costs have come down um compared to what they were five years ago and yet the margin still still seems to be similar and that's because mm. they can sell them at that price i mean people will pay that money to get them and you can see that with the second hand prices but it's it, it, it's harder to justify on just purely uh, it is it is more expensive to produce i mean they are getting close to equivalence in, in terms of the cost to actually make a electric car as opposed to a, uh, uh, a petrol car um and uh, so you yes the batteries are more expensive but all the other components are cheaper I mean, that's basically the mm-hmm. way we are the battery car so um and, and uh, so the batteries are getting cheaper every day and and, and they're getting smaller and less likely to run out to degrade and i mean there's been so many advances in the battery not not some of the extreme advances perhaps we were hoping for three or four years ago i mean i was pretty convinced by now we'd have a decent solid state state battery we don't seem to have that um you can speculate why that may be the case or not but um but certainly we are starting to see structural batteries coming in which is basically where the body of the car forms the battery um that's starting to become be something we will see um which means you can get a lot more 
back to powering but without increasing the weight quite as much uh, which again obviously has a has an effect because if, if it's a lighter car it'll go further on the same on the same size battery um so yeah there's there's lots of things happening at the moment which are, which are interesting and a lot of that i mean it's not and that sort of advances in battery technology for cars is actually having a knock-on effect on battery technology for other things as well laptops phones, yeah. watches and we're starting to see some pretty long battery lives on, on them because of the the the, the advances we're seeing to charge electric cars and also home batteries i mean it's never been a better time to have a home battery even if you haven't got solar if you, if you can get a time of use tariff and actually use because uh, basically you could charge a battery overnight and to, for all your electrical needs during the day um in most cases yeah <laughs> and, and and then you're getting it at the lower rate so so there's a lot of lot of positives going on at the moment through through that I mean, the other thing is which has happened a lot is the um, the the idea that uh, batteries can charge faster than they were before. Well, these charge fast, charge more steadily across their um, chart, what they call charging curve. Because we've mentioned this before, that charge, charging sort of picks up at a certain point, goes quite nicely for a little while, and then drops off near the end as it's more difficult to fill the battery up without getting too much heat mm. and stuff coming. Um, and then there's a lot of moves on that to make flatter charging cars faster charging and some people are working on batteries which charge in half the time or quarter of the time they can't charge and that that's that's sort of an interesting advance i mean it's, it, once you get because my car will do will charge 200 miles in in less than 20 minutes um if you could quarter that so you my car would you could get 200 miles in five minutes then that's sort of like petrol filling type times yeah and and that means then you need le- you don't need as many charging points do you because you're not no, you don't. people you're aren't charged. there as long yeah yeah you aren't there as long um uh, and also i think it also means that um you might actually end up going with smaller batteries because if you can charge if you can guarantee you can charge quickly people won't want won't be quite so mm. keen to have such a long necessarily have such a long range or need need to have such a long range. So there's lots of lots of interesting impacts on that. I mean, there's there's, inter- there's been a couple of interesting challenges done over the years where a car with a smaller battery has beaten a car with a bigger battery, even though it's got a much smaller range, because it takes it takes less time to charge it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, that's an interesting one. So sort of, the sort of like a um, the one I saw was a car which had about 120 miles range beat a car with a 260 mile range over a 200 mile journey. Yeah. Even though, yes, which doesn't actually seem to make any sense at all, because the 260 mile car shouldn't have to actually stop to charge, um, mm. but it still did. So it had to charge up to start with. So, yeah, it, it's it's. Yeah, yeah well, it takes back to the old. It's like the Formula One days when you used to be refueling. You could do a one stop or a two stop. You, you, know, you, yeah. you, you had a you had a lighter car with a two stop, so yeah. it gave you an advantage over a single stop, even though you spent yeah. less time stopped. But yeah, uh, and yeah. yeah, you apply it to batteries. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah, and, 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 and watching the Formula E the weekend, and obviously, unfortunately, I, I didn't get to go to the Formula E. I haven't said I was going last week because I caught COVID on Friday, which was really annoying. But <laughs> so, uh, yeah. um, but fortunately, I'm over that now. But um, yeah, the. the but I watched it on the streams, and and that was really interesting. The battery strategies on there, and obviously the London, mm. London base, they didn't actually have really worry about power usage at all. They weren't going to well, one someone managed to run out on the last lap, but that was only bad management. But but watching how they did the power boost and everything on that, that's really interesting. How that's the strategies, and it does make for a very interesting racing strategy. Um, yeah, because they, re- they do mid, so they do the regens as well, don't they? They do regen, sort of, and, mm. and also they have these these power boosts they can take during the race, and and that's what they call attack mode. And it, and the strategy for actually taking those is really interesting. It makes it makes for far more interesting racing because you, you, you the lead does change hands. Even if you've got someone out in front, mm. they, they when they go into attack mode, they fall back a little bit, and then they can but they they get a gain, and then they have to decide whether they really want to take it or not at that point. But they have to take it at some point, and that makes that that makes it really interesting. Mm. I mean, some sort of stuff in there is a bit gimmicky, but but that one I actually think works mm. as, a, as an option. And to and, and, they, nice and and they do that in Formula One as well. They're using the same. They do you know they're exactly the same thing. They use the hybrid and they're using the electricity to do defensive or attack. Yeah. Um, and they 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 choose the deployment modes. The de- where it gets deployed is pre-programmed, but you can choose what kind of mode. So if you're in defensive, you can you can choose to de- deploy it differently or harvest it differently and 
yeah that that makes so that that makes it gives you that strategy element as well but yeah that's um i think that's one thing i think the probably the Formula One group hasn't done enough obviously to talk about the hybrid elements of it and of course they're going for a, a completely synthetic fuel i think it's 2035 or something like that so yeah. they won't be using any fossil fuel at all in their, in, in their um in their car so yeah it yeah it's it's all it's interesting stuff and it's just uh, it's just for the end user it's just start yeah, there's a lot of decisions to make isn't it when you uh when you want to purchase if you've got a company car i think it's fairly easy to because of the taxing tax ways but if you're if you pack purchasing one you've got a few decisions to make but i think i guess there's plenty of websites you can go to that sort of help you calculate the the pros and cons of, the, of these things yeah yeah there's, there's, there's lots of places you can go go and have a look look at that on, on there. so um i mean the, the it's a good starting place. It's probably the full, fully charged YouTube channel. That's always a good place if you've got to mm-hmm. pick up some, in fact, some figures on things. And we've, we've talked to them quite regularly on our channel. So, but, uh, yeah, when's it? Yeah. And they got another show coming up. Um, well, they've just had, had one. Uh, they, they just got, had one, yeah. Got, yeah, they've got a couple coming next year. They, they, they've got the European one and the American one. I think they just had the European one. They've got the American one just going on. Um, yeah, just, they're, they're, they're constantly sitting up. And next year, they've got a lot of shows. They've got fully charged mm-hmm. North and South. Um, going on so there's one one coming up nearer to you <laughs> oh that's good because i think the last uh, although silverstone was quite a good location but yeah some of those have been further south yeah found was a bit, a bit far south for a lot of people unfortunately but, mm. um, yeah very good show of course but uh, yeah, yeah so, so yeah so um i was just actually looking it up for you um so th- they're gonna have an event in yorkshire um yeah. Just had, had that up on my screen about two seconds ago and it's clicked off um okay so yeah the, the north american one is on the 10th and 11th of this uh, of september this year um and then we're on to 2023 they've got one in australia in march europe in march uh united kingdom south in april and then the united kingdom north is in may in harrogate oh at a very nice location yes yeah so that's well come come and have a look at that one when it's mm. up north but to you yeah i mean really really good stuff and uh it's yeah and the, the, i mean uh, what i really liked about that show this year was it wasn't just about cars it was you talked a lot about um, electricity and, and green energy and, and how and the best way of actually making your house more efficient and, and not just talking about things like heat pumps, which obviously got on the, all the news and you know, but things like zero emission boilers, direct de- direct replacement for your boilers, so you don't have to. Um, so some of them are electric power powered rather than gas powered, but they 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 use thermal storage of some sort and do things. So yeah, there's some really interesting technology going on yeah. at the moment. Yeah, yeah, there definitely is, especially with rising electricity prices. How you manage that and all that kind of thing is. Uh, it's really important now, isn't it? It is, yeah. So yeah, this is really very, very interesting show. Show that one, and and, and worth yeah. a, definitely worth a look to to catch up on something with bits and pieces going on there. Um, and also uh, another place which will be worth a look for, for that nice segue. It's fascinating tech in a few months time because we're actually going to do relaunch ourselves with a green special, which is going to have lots of EV stuff and some interviews. Oh, excellent! Yeah, very good. Um, um, and some looks at some of the vehicles out there and things. Um, and some technologies, and uh, I'm, I'm actually quite in the process at the moment specking um, solar power and battery for the house I'm in in here. So I'm trying to look at all the market at the moment, and it's, it's definitely changed a lot since last time I looked. So, uh, mm. so and it makes a lot more sense now. I uh, said even yeah. without so, even without solar panels and batteries, make a lot of, a lot of uh, yeah, <laughs> not <lot of> good. <laughs> yeah, oh, that'd be interesting. I, I'm, I'm looking at this interesting the solar panel idea myself. So. Um, yeah, I'll let you do all the legwork, and then I'll read yeah. about it on Fascinated Tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excellent stuff. Uh, well, yeah. Well, so when's that relaunch? Hopefully, just after September. Uh, we've just got a couple of things we need to sort out, but um, yeah, it's, it's sort of, yeah, it'll be it'll be the autumnish issue um, we're coming come out. So there's a there's a there's a big green event uh, comes out Cephex, which is in, in at that time of the year. So we want to sort of tie in with that. Um, it, but yeah it's gonna it's gonna be good excellent 
Fantastic. Well, that ties nicely in, so you can tell us where you are and how to find the, what you're working on. Yeah, so um, you can always find me on Twitter, at Gary, with two R's, WMA. And that's probably the easiest way to find anything about me. <laughs> yeah, definitely is. Yeah, and you've got your your um, YouTube channel as well. Yeah, yeah. We should, we should find, find that from Twitter. there. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Excellent stuff. Well, you can find me at iSticks on Twitter. Um, hopefully, oh, I don't think Richard's back with us even next week. So uh, week after Richard will be back. Um, it is summer holiday time, I guess. Um, we'll be back same time, same place this week. I'll drop in now the video and um, music that I did. It's called The Beach. In fact, it's, it's got an Italian name on the, and you'll see that on the, on the video because it's the beach I was in it in Italy. And uh, yeah, we'll be back same time, same place next week. Thanks for listening. Take care.